You're listening to Spanners on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, and I'm in a shed. In the shed with the best of the net. Spanners ready. I feel that needs some explaining to people new to listening to my online endeavours with my online content creators. I drop into my shed uh, during the week before the show to speak to some of the finest content creators in the county, YouTubers, podcasters and bloggers. And when none of them are available, I call up Liam Taylor to speak to me. How's it going, Liam? It's going well. I should be angry at you for dropping me in it like that, but I'm not. I'm just used to it. It's I just am, a relationship. I am jealous because you also <laughs> record things in a shed and your shed is three times the size of mine. And you do you live in it? Yeah, it's three times the size because I actually have to sleep, bathe and cook in my shed. You just have to work in your shed. Did you not hear? No one has to bathe anymore. It's fine. Over <laughs> over video conference, no one can tell if you've showered. I think the overall message is definitely wash more. Hmm. Okay. As a BBC presenter, perhaps I should be more <laughs> responsible. Yes. Please maintain your normal routines, even though you're only talking to people on video conference. Um, you and I, Liam, are very used to. Uh, in fact, I should introduce you. Liam Taylor. LT guitarist on Twitter, uh, a very talented musician, a sound engineer, and somebody who has communicated how to be creative uh, over the past few years on his YouTube channel and uh, improv podcast as well, Conversation Hat, and a brand new podcast called Liam Taylor Plays His Guitar From His Shed. I think, is that what it's called? The new one? That was the working title. It's now the LT guitarist podcast. I might revert to the original title again. I don't know. Uh, but you are a you are a communicator of the music industry as well, which is why I like speaking to you. And we're very used to communicating over this medium. But there's a lot of people who are now trying to do things over video conference and they're perhaps struggling. Now, you as a content creator and communicator, how have you found that transition? So I've. I found with music collaborations, it's it's not changed an awful lot because we still seem to be quite reclusive. We don't like to have face-to-face <laughs> conversations like we're having now. There's just something about being a music creator that makes you inherently introverted. So the, the collaborations I've got going on at the moment are all basically revolve around Dropbox and Google Drive. So we don't really have to talk at all. We're just sharing ideas and swapping samples back and forth that way. So that that thankfully hasn't really changed. But I am finding a lot more of my time is going into explaining why people's video conferences aren't working. And we, we had a little bit of hoo-ha trying to set this one up as well, didn't we? Never, never show a peek behind the curtain, <laughs> Liam. It all went absolutely <laughs> fine. Well, then tell me, you know, what are the problems people are having, uh, particularly musicians, with this video conferencing? I think it's all silly things like trying to work out, oh, what button do I need to press on Skype for them to actually see my face? That's kind of the uh, the awkward bit, but I, hopefully once you get, sort it out the first time, it's not really a, not really an issue there. And as I say, I don't think musicians are actually struggling. I think they're kind of thriving in this time. All we've got to worry about is the open mic nights in uh, 2021 when the lockdown is over. How many how many people will have taught themselves guitar and written the isolation blues? So if you're if that idea is horrible to you, then just you wait for next year. That's all you'll be hearing. Now, Liam. Taylor Swift's Isolation Blues. Now, Liam, I feel like you're personally attacking my eight-year-old daughter who has <laughs> just written a stay-at-home song that I showed you before we went on air. So I'm going to tell my daughter that you attacked her personally. Um, but y- you bring up a great point, which is that suddenly everyone is looking to be more creative. And there's this sudden kind of online surge of social pressure to go, well, what are you doing? How are you using your time? In the Mm. lockdown, I think people do want to use this time if they're in kind of a financially secure position. So a lot of freelancers are struggling for work because there's not gigs going on. But some people are, um, yeah, like yourself. But some people, they're they've got more secure employment, so they do actually just have time, which is a nice position to be in. But I would say, don't feel pressured just because you're seeing friends and family. I don't know, releasing music, doing stuff on YouTube, doing stuff on Twitch, making a podcast, because chances are they were doing that already. It's just that you weren't seeing it because you were at your desk job all day. You weren't on your phone scrolling for something to do. So don't feel like everyone's doing something because they were probably already doing it. That said, if you want to take up playing banjo, you go ahead and do that. 
Um, but what about, you know, people who do want to, who have decided, yeah, I get all that. I get that it's just social pressure. I know I don't have to, but I want to start doing this kind of thing, learning an instrument or uh, even maybe doing stuff like we're doing and recording yourself from home. There's an intimidating technological barrier. There absolutely is. And it's worth mentioning that the uh, the lockdown hasn't changed that. That's always going to be the case. So I think now is a good time if you do want to do it you have time to sort of get through that uh, annoying technological barrier. So I think just get started, but make sure that you have a good idea and you have an idea that is actually serving people in the lockdown in some way. Or I think this also applies if you're already making stuff, you've got to think about how the stuff that you're making, how your content can then serve people experiencing lockdown. What do you mean by serve? So what is going to be useful to them? So I'm going to I'm going to take an example from what I've been doing. I've been doing a weekly quarantine guitar challenge. So every Monday I'm posting a, a guitar phrase, a lick or a pattern or an exercise. And I'm saying, this is the thing that you have to do this week. And just because I phrased it as the quarantine challenge, that's then something to give guitarists during the quarantine, during the lockdown, something to focus on. So it could be the same sort of thing. Let's Oh, uh, I'm going to make up an example. If you do cocktail making tutorials on YouTube. Wow, that you went got there. Th- what what I went what, there. What summoned that <laughs> into your head? I was watching a um oh we'll talk about this in a minute as well. I was watching Jade Adams last night doing a uh cocktails and card games thing. So she was just talking about a gin company that sent her a bunch of gin, and that was the whole live stream. It was really nice. So if you're If you're making cocktails and that's your weekly tutorial that you do, you've got to think about, oh, people aren't going to be having cocktail parties for the foreseeable future. So what is something that people could make just one or two of, or they could make in isolation, or they could have like a a Skype party? What is something that people will already have ingredients for? It's not going to break the bank and you could enjoy a little party online. So it's all about pivoting what you're already doing or what you want to do in order to serve the audience who are stuck at home. So don't recommend a drum circle challenge, uh, which would involve them having yep. to go and meet up with a bunch of people. Uh, we'll be back with Liam Taylor after this. You're listening to Spanners on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, and I'm in a reasonably sized shed. In the shed with the best of the net. Spanners ready. It's not the size of the shed that matters. It's what you do with it. And I use it to speak to Liam Taylor at LT Guitarist, who has a much bigger shed. But I feel we can both agree that our sheds have equal value and that no one's better than anyone else here, Liam. My long term goal is to physically lift your shed and attach it to my shed. So I have an attic. Is that OK with you? You I mean, can still you can stay there. It's just more of a commute for you. Is that OK? I mean, that would be a very aggressive power move. But in, <laughs> in this new world order, perhaps that's what it's going to take. Liam, uh, we're talking about, you know, servicing the online community. It's a little different during the lockdown and, and ensuring that what we're doing online as content creators actually is is applicable and valuable at this time. So not recommending, you know, here's your challenge. Get together with 12 friends in a public space and do a drum circle. Unless your drum circle is the space two metres apart, in which case it's going to take up the entire county. No, it's still an unnecessary journey. Don't be like the the MP that I won't name (laughs) that fell foul of that (laughs) particular clause. Um, But, you know, here's an interesting thing is that a lot of musicians, my wife included, have tried to do things over video conference and they've tried singing and there's a slight delay because that signal physically has to go to the exchange and come back. You can't you can't defeat the speed of light no matter how good your music is. So quick tip for trying to tackle the delay situation. If you're using software that is installed on your computer rather than a web-based software, I'll explain that in a second, you will have slightly less of a delay. So we're using Zoom right now. I know a lot of companies are using Google Hangouts or Zoom for their meetings. Or Skype. There is a or Skype. Well, mm, no, Skype's something you'll install. So we'll get to that I in a second. See. If you're using something browser-based, so something on your website, on a on a website, the signal has to go from your webcam and your microphone to wherever that company is based and then to the other person's computer. If you have a piece of software installed, your computer will bear the brunt of all of that processing. So Skype, 
um, Discord, anything that is installed on your computer. I know you can install Zoom as yes, well. Yes, good. I was that, will, that, yeah. that will, yeah, you can install Zoom as well. That will bear the brunt of the processing. So actually, you get a little bit less delay, a little bit less lag there. So that's a little tip for people who are struggling with the whole um, working from home meeting situation, or indeed people who want to do live streaming. And in terms of getting better audio quality, you, you've kind of I think actually, Spanish, you're in a good position because you should be in the know about what decent broadcast equipment is. Yeah. So for my podcast and YouTube streams, obviously, I have a variety of experience with my collaborators. And, uh, you know, people are like, oh, I'm in a nice empty room. I've got great space. This is my office space. Actually, that's the worst thing because you've got lots of corners and you've got lots of walls for it to bounce on. So I say to them, look, just chuck a load of cushions in there. Hang a, yeah. hang a, we've even had people like hang a heavy blanket on the wall. Um, or just put things behind your microphone, like a cushion behind your microphone, yeah. just to stop that echo. It makes a huge difference to the people who you're speaking to. If you sound like you're in a bathtub or you suddenly uh, lose all, all the bass and, and, and the middle and you just sound like you, you're on a telephone call, it can be quite distracting. Or if there's static buzzes or somebody's coming in way too bassy, it can be distracting. So that's the main thing is people are jumping on these things without doing the research of how to make your yourself sound better. Absolutely. And here's a cute idea. Why not do a music live stream from a pillow fort? There you go. There's one for free because that will take care of a lot of the uh, the room sound. That will make it nice, close. And it's a cute title. So you're onto a winner there. But yeah, you're absolutely right, Spanners. I think it's a combination of not necessarily having the best technological setup, but having the most appropriate one. And I would try to avoid going out and buying anything new because I don't want to put pressure on delivery services at this time and all the shops are shut. So just see what you've got, see if you can treat the space you're in. And equally important to the actual quality of what you're doing is who is it serving? What is the purpose of it? And then if it goes well, maybe you can carry on doing it after the lockdown. Before I let you go, do tell us, uh, you know, one of the stories you've you've told on your new on your new guitar podcast which is called uh, Liam Taylor does guitar out of his shed without wearing shoes and socks um just to give our listeners a taste <laughs> the LT guitarist podcast as it's also known <laughs> pretty, pretty sure that's what i said yeah close enough so the most recent episode is an interview with Jay Foreman if you don't know Jay Foreman he's a youtuber he is a musical comedian and he's a children's musical comedian often as well. So he, he writes silly songs. Uh, he's got a really amazing one where he sings songs a single beat out of time. And it looks, it, it's really fun to watch, but it looks like the hardest thing in the world. So, so find Jay Foreman, have a look for one syllable out of time. The interview was really interesting because we talked about the history of YouTube because that's, that's one of the big, well, it's one of the things that um, he's best known for. And he's been on that platform for so very long. And we got talking about the old days of YouTube and how it used to be cat videos and people falling yes. over. And we decided that it was uh, the the early days of YouTube was essentially you've been framed, but without the production value. Yes, no, no, definitely. It was definitely much more uh, home people shooting a camcorder, whereas now it's become yeah. like a genuine media platform. Massively. I don't know if one is better than the other. That's just how things used to be. And that's how that was the uh, what we were competing with when we were uploading 10 years ago. And and now that has kind of been replaced over the years with platforms like Vine, where people were limited yep. to six second videos. And right now, uh, the big, huge thing for the kids, them kids, is TikTok, which is yep. absolute. And I say this because I'm not normally one to give opinions and I, I probably shouldn't state my opinion, but it's hot garbage. But the kids love it. They absolutely love it. So I'm going to take this opportunity uh, at Convo Hat Podcast and at LT Guitarist on TikTok. Oh my, <laughs> Liam, you're like way too one of them. TikTok. I'm not even sorry. That's the thing. I really like TikTok. <laughs> uh, it is incredibly popular and it's basically a bunch yep. of kids doing their best impression of Napoleon Dynamite, that film yep. from about 15 years ago. And whilst Napoleon Dynamite in the film was rightly derided and mocked, it is suddenly very cool to do all this stuff. So go and check out TikTok, an app, if you dare, and come back to me and tell me why I was right uh, and why Liam was wrong. Liam, 
I've mocked your podcast so much, I've forgotten the real name of it. Please give that a plug. <laughs> Same as my uh, same as my Twitch, same as my Twitter at LT Guitarist, and it's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, most of the big platforms. Just search LT Guitarist, all one word, and it'll be there. You'll know it's that one because it's blue and it's my face. Thanks very much, Liam Taylor. Cheers, fans. Take it easy. Hold up. 